This is Twit. And I hope you are excited because we have something incredible to share. I want to go back to a product category. We're about half we've been an talking hour about in. it, and it's been uh, undergoing an incredible change. And I'm imagining this is we're really be talking about redefining the, the personal computer experience. Yeah. PC is rapidly evolving. Snapdragon on it's been uh, the a Surface Pro X was awful, for unusable for productivity for entertainment. Recently, as as you all heard me talking in the past, it's now a communication device. One of the key use cases that we do with the PC is to communicate. And even how we think about communicating not only with family friends, but also how we communicate with each other uh, at work. It is demanding more and more performance and mobility. Those two things are, are the requirements of next generation PCs, and they're not changing. But also, it is being redefined entirely by AI and generative AI as we talk about it. Microsoft is redefining the entire experience of the PC with the Copilot. And to make all of this happen, the PC needs to go to the next level of processing capabilities, including its main processing engine, which is the CPU. They worked with and that's Qualcomm, Microsoft did for the SQ1, which was their today. special PC-based Snapdragon. We came to Summit uh, last year. And we said, we are embarking on this journey to develop our new custom Orion CPU. And our goal, when we set ourselves to develop the CTU, is to set the bar for the industry and establish the performance leadership for Windows PC. We have delivered. And I have to tell you, we exceeded our own expectations. So, based on the announcement today, I'm very pleased to tell you that there is a new sheriff in town. <laughs> the Orion CPU is the new leader on mobile computing, period. It's been designed. Well, it's easy to say. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm skeptical. This is their attempt to compete with Apple Silicon, of course. It's been designed by Qualcomm from the ground up with one thing in mind. Can we have um Unprecedented level of performance at extremely low power. That's what we do. And create both NVIDIA and AMD are working on similar chips, but they're still behind. Intel this way behind. That we that we Apple envision is going to be category. part of how our future, I think, experience, including of of mobile computing. Windows on ARM runs better on so Apple, far this better. Has been on an incredible Apple journey. What I would like to do right now, please give a warm uh, round of applause for the leader that has designed the CPU with the incredible team, Gerard Williams. This is, the, of course, the, one of the Nuvia acquisitions. Theo, give me a hug, Gerard. <laughs> he was a uh, senior director at Apple waiting, I think we've been and waiting did Apple for this Silicon, moment, a lot of uh, Apple Silicon time. engineering. And, uh, I'll tell you, and Gerard, of course, he was sued by Apple after he left think, and took a lot of people with him. Day and night, especially in the past uh, couple months, people have been burning the midnight oil. And I'll tell you one thing about this. Usually in our history, developing chips and we're developing flagships every year, you do a lot of simulation work. And then when you actually get to your product, uh, you hope that your product is going to meet what you expected Qualcomm to see Qualcomm bought in Nuvia in uh, January this 2001 for $1.4 billion. everything we expected to do in the simulation. But of course, it's not always that the actual it was these guys, especially that, Gerard Williams, that uh, they the really simulation. bought. And Orion is faster than any mobile computing uh, competitor today. So I'd like to ask Gerard to tell you, Gerard, how was this journey of put, go forward and we're going to said we're going to develop the CPU from ground up and we're just going to do the best thing for mobile computing, period. Tell about your experience doing this. Well, for, first of all, I want to say thank you to you, Cristiano, and, and, and you and the audience, all the partnership that's been, uh, been here with us. When, when Nuvia was started, uh, they didn't even year try to get into the desktop space. They wanted to do data centers and servers. What Cristiano said is true. But that it's interesting journey, that Qualcomm has re Although it was last year I was company. on stage, that journey was a four- or five-year journey to get here. So it, it took a lot of effort. Um, many, many people inside it's, of Qualcomm. Uh, it said that he wanted to, Apple to, to do servers, team, which is one of the reasons uh, he left to do team, Nuvia. 
and uh, the software organization, the exec team here supporting us um, and allowing us to make this happen. Um, it, was, it, was a, it, was, it was difficult, but what I can say in the end, we pulled it off, and Cristiano's going to show you some pretty amazing numbers. They made some promises last year. He was that, on stage awesome. last year with the same Look, it's, what promises. Look, what we'll is see. fascinating really is this is our first one. Like, this, is our, <laughs> this is our Gen 1 mm -hmm. of doing uh, this new CPU uh, for PCs. And it came out at the very first one, and it's just now the absolute leader. Mm. But that was the first one. Yeah. We're not stopping here. So, Gerard, tell us what's uh, coming next. Leader, really? So, yeah, that, that, that is actually something that we're going to save as a big surprise. But what I can tell you is we're going to improve power, we're going to improve performance, and there's going to be many CPUs to come after this first one that we launched today with you guys. This is just phase one. Gerard, thank you so much for all that you have been doing. I think for Qualcomm, for your team, for all of our partners and the consumers. This is great. We're completely humbled by what you guys have delivered. Thank <laughs> Former you so much. Former chief architect at Apple, uh, very instrumental in the development of Apple Silicon, but uh, now at Qualcomm after uh, founding his own company, Nuvia, which Qualcomm acquired two years ago. All right, so this, this is the moment I want to get to because this is not just all talk. We have to prove it. And, uh, and that's what I want to show you right now next. And, uh, and it's going to be a journey of data that you're going to get. You're going to get some data now. You're going to get some data later in the presentation. We're going to go through a lot of details uh, We're going to pause tomorrow. the tape briefly, but and uh, really I'm going to give you a little commercial you, for our sponsors here, and then we'll come right back. You're not going to miss a thing. On the real silicon, on, okay, we're on back. the laptop. So let's, let's see this let's laptop. Let's you how we're doing. So the new CPU Orion CPU exceeds the M2 Max. Oh, and that's the bars. Those are the bars you want to see. Single-threaded CPU performance. It's the M2 faster Max. than any leading ARM-compatible competitor in a single-threaded CPU performance. Take a photo. Take a photo. <laughs> And of course, we're going to have to see this. I, I can't read the fine print from here. Whose benchmark is that? But. I'm sure you want to take the next photo, too. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to match. Using less power. 30% less if power. If you want to match that performance. You know, this you would can be great news for Microsoft and Isn't Windows that Online. And frankly, I'd like to see it on Linux. I'm, I would love a Linux laptop that competed with Apple's uh, silicon. Okay, but if we say... That is the new CPU leader for mobile computing, period. Uh, I have to show you more. So it's faster than leading x86 CPU. Now, this is, of course, where Apple has Single a little problem because CPU performance of the core they aren't, in fact, faster than Intel, except in power per watt. X, which is designed for high-performance gaming. It uses device. a lot of juice. The i9 is up. Okay, get ready for the next photo. And a lot That's of gonna fan. be good. So how much less power? And if you want to match the performance. 70% less power. That's significant. He does a 70% less power. Now if they can live up to these numbers, this is very good news indeed. But remember, it's single threaded performance. This is an incredible moment, not only yet. for Snapdragon, GPU, yeah. not only for Qualcomm, also for the Windows ecosystem. And we are busy working with our partners to launch AI PCs powered by the CPU, and they're going to be incredible devices. I expect those mid-2024. But I need to ask you a question. Are you coming to Snapdragon Summit 2024? Are you going to be here with us in 2024? Sure, you fly me to Hawaii, I'll be there. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. Uh, and, but we're going to show how it's going to be doing There's versus the competing smartphones. Uh, and you're going to see the Orion mix it away into cars, into mixed reality, virtual reality, augmented reality devices, in addition to what it's going to do uh, on PCs. Now, as the first Orion is that there are in a product Linux distros that would run on this, today for PCs, including I have presumably I Asahi Linux, which is written for Apple Silicon. To this incredible device, which is next generation PC. And I want you all to hear from an incredible strategic partner we've been collaborating on this journey. We have a long history of collaboration with Microsoft. We could not be more proud 
of this partnership, especially on the vision. When we talk about uh, the role of AI on devices, the role of AI on its hybrid working devices in the cloud, we speak the same language, we see the same future, and we see how AI is changing the user experience of computing devices and allowing us to be more productive. And we've been busy on this task to help Microsoft deliver this incredible future with those experiences, not only to consumers, but for the enterprises and, and much more. So I sat down with uh, Satya uh, Nadella from Microsoft, and we had that conversation, especially the role of AI in those devices. Microsoft really and wants this to be to share true. That conversation with you. Let's watch. Satya, it's so great to have you involved with this year's Snapdragon Summit for Qualcomm. Look, uh, Qualcomm and Microsoft have a very long story of partnerships, but our joint activity that I'm really excited about it is AI. So my question to you is, from your perspective, what do you think Gen AI is going to enable? No, first of all, it's such a pleasure to be with you, Cristiano, at the Snapdragon Summit. I do feel that this, this generation of AI, Gen AI, you know, has, I think, the potential to be, quite frankly, as big as, say, the mobile revolution that you were very much part of, or the cloud revolution, or the, you know, the web and the PC, it's that class. And if I had to sort of say, why do I think so? I think fundamentally, Microsoft think what the dream of computing always uses was. the term Can NPU, neural processing unit, much more and has spent a lot of energy with Copilot and others Can to, you to use NPUs. Unfortunately, their, their main processor supplier, Intel, doesn't have an NPU. Beyond that, that I think will fundamentally change what an operating system is, what a UI looks like, how things, application interaction goes. So UI changes always are big, and this is a big UI change. The other one is we now have a new reasoning engine. Anytime you use something like GitHub Copilot, it gives you, oh, wow, this is a completely new thing to have an assistant that can oh, reason about it and help it. It does have a meteor like, so which is I just feel, now coming out. Engine and a new natural interface, pretty much all software categories can be changed. And the exciting thing for me is the system architecture underneath, the innovation that you're doing underneath is also changing. Now, you would expect a company like Qualcomm, we're laser focused and building the best possible platform to enable this technology on the devices at the edge. Yeah. So when you think about Gen AI experiences on the edge devices, working together with the cloud, um, how do you think this is going to evolve? At the end of the day, we have these large foundational models that are showing unbelievable capability, emergent capability, scaling laws, and GPT-4. I mean, it was a real breakthrough. Emergent? So the interesting thing now really? is, if I look at the innovation that's coming, is on device, when you have a very powerful NPUs like the ones you're building, how do you compose an application that's built using both local compute and the Microsoft spent a lot of time sort of talking about this actually will, together to power. And that's sort of what event. we're enabling with our Windows uh, AI ecosystem in partnership with you. So I think that we are literally going to have lots and lots of applications which will have local models, will have hybrid models. Uh, and that, I think, is the future of AI going forward. Can you share a little bit of your vision of when we have all of this capability running on the PC, what is going to be the new window experience uh, and other devices touched by Microsoft? No, absolutely. And so in some sense, there is a new generation of AI PCs that I think are getting created. So the work we're doing together, you know, is sort of going to bring together these experiences that cannot be done uh, without sort of a new system architecture. You talked about how we're going to bring together the CPU and the NPU together to support these new experiences. And the marquee experience for us is going to be Copilot. And so when I think about Copilot, you know, perhaps the last time, you know, when Windows first came, you know, together, we had the start button. The Copilot is like the start button. Uh, it becomes the orchestrator of all your app if you're, experiences. If you're interested in so, this, for the, example, I just go there and express Kevin Scott's my intent, uh, and talk. It, it either navigates at, me uh, to build. an application, or it brings the application to. The I think profile. really did a great job. So of, it helps uh, me learn, query, create. Explaining uh, what Microsoft changes, I think, kind of uh, thinking on how this is. Satya, thank you so much for the partnership. As I said, we're incredibly proud, and let's continue to innovate Absolutely. together. Thank you so much, Christian.
Microsoft really looking forward CEO to the launch Nadella. of some of this stuff and then yeah. seeing what we really look forward to having Windows on ARM uh, run well. And then also how, what ultimately users do with all of this innovation. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching our live coverage of the Snapdragon Summit 2023. Of course, very interested in what Qualcomm is proposing. Isn't that awesome? With its newest Look, generation uh, of Snapdragon processors. Really uh, Snapdragon incredible, processors. Incredible, They're calling awesome, it the Orion partner. with a I mean, Y thank you. platform. Thank you, Satya, uh, for taking the time of uh, participating uh, in our, our event and sharing this conversation. Uh, we've been in a journey together from a number of years to get to this point today. And we're going to bring the power of advanced next generation computing in AI to more people, transforming the AI experience. Now, I'm going to talk about, we're going to go to the next phase of our summit. We're going to talk about products and all the details. I'd like a round of applause to welcome Alex Katuzin, SVP and GM of Mobile Computer and XR, my brother in arms of many years. Alex, please come to stage. The Snapdragon X Elite will have 12 Orion cores running at 3.8 gigahertz. Thank you, thank you, Cristiano. Adreno uh, Cristiano. GPUs at 4.6 so teraflops. Here beautiful Maui, and welcome to this is from Anand Tech. That's joining us. The Hexagon NPU Orion at 46 tops. Is a huge leap forward for Qualcomm. And today, I'm so excited to show you the very first Snapdragon platform to feature this revolutionary CPU. Let's take a look. It's a four nanometer. Create uh, the future PC. We'll be talking a lot about this tomorrow, of course, on Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Richard Campbell. But ultimately, it's gonna, it's we're gonna have to get our hands on this hardware to see if it lives up to its promise. There have been a lot of promises uh, for Windows on ARM and Snapdragon uh, processors. Promises. Uh, on, the, on which they have not really delivered. Uh, but that was a very impressive graphic. They can really outpace uh, the i9 and Apple Silicon at 70% lower power than the i9, 30% lower power than Apple Silicon. That would be impressive if they can live up to that, that single core performance. Note they didn't talk about multi core. Not sure why. Oh, hey, that's a really nice iPhone you have there. You totally picked the right color. Hey, since you do use an iPhone and maybe use an iPad or an Apple Watch or an Apple TV, well, you should check out iOS Today. It's a show that I, Micah Sargent, and my co-host Rosemary Orchard host every Tuesday right here on the Twit Network. It covers all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, Watch OS, iPad OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer. And we love to give you tips and tricks about making the most of those devices, checking out great apps and services, and answering your tech questions. I hope you check it out. <laughs> 